Hello, and welcome to Group 10's project on Chapter 16. What you are hearing right now, actually, is Renaissance slash Early Baroque music, and it's by Giovanni Gabrielli. It's called Canzonas and Sonatas, so thought it would be nice to have some nice background music. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the Renaissance. Many works generally regarded as masterpieces were created during the Renaissance. Um, when an ambitious artist joined technical advances with profound subject matter to create works that still resonate today. In fact, Renaissance thinking continues to influence our lives today, not only in Western countries, but in all parts of the world. Humanism is a major influence and drive of the Renaissance culture. It is the philosophical, literary, and artistic movement that favored logical thought and challenged religious fervor. Secular, so non-religious art, scientific inquiry, and it was about rediscovering classical culture of Greece and Rome. So, the different versions of the Renaissance consist of the Northern Europe's version, which is which was highly influenced by Gothic style, and the Southern Europe was influenced by Byzantine and Greco-Roman influence. An example of the Northern influence had evolved out of pre-Christian nature-centered religions that became God-centered through conversion to Christianity. And an example of Byzantine work uh, was actually by Italian painter G Giada di Bondone and his painting Lamentation. And as you can see, Italian Renaissance grew from cla classical Mediterranean art and is the most remembered today. So the Italian Renaissance consisted, Italian architects, sculptors, and painters sought to integrate Christian spiritual traditions with the rational ordering um, of physical life in an earthly space. And that's where you'll find uh, examples of the Last Supper, which we'll get to in a second, but it was driven by a booming economy and chaotic political situations, and these all, we'll get to these in a second. So, re religious figures were David, Mary, Ma Mary Magdalene, the Holy Trinity, the Last Supper, and there was also a big boom in secular. Now, these were the two big art themes of the Renaissance. Um, so, for example, the Holy Trinity was the first painting based on systematic use of linear perspective. David was not only a biblical figure, but his resistance to foreign domination of the Jews inspired the Florentines. Don Donatello brought the Greek ideal of what it means to be human into the Christian context. And Mary Magdalene is a forcefully expressive figure of old age and repentance. Now, what's important here is that Renanos... Re bleh, Renaissance humanism becomes apparent when we compare uh, paintings like The Last Supper by Leonardo with the Byzantine mosaic Christ as, uh, the Byzantine mosaic Christ as Pantocrator. And here, Christ is portrayed as a lofty being of infinite power, while in The Last Supper, he's on earth, he's kind of one, he's at a supper, he's at a dinner, so it's very not, um, it's very religious, but also kind of nonsense. So these are some examples, um, like I mentioned before, there's David, there is the School of Athens by Raphael, and uh, Birth of Venus, which we will get to in a second, by Sandro Botticelli. So the High Renaissance was between 1490 to 1530, and it was the peak of Italian art, and it peaked mainly in Florence, Rome, and Venice, and... The three artists that we talked about developed a style of art that was calm, balanced, and idealized, combining Christian theology with Greek philosophy and modern science. So a big person, artist of the Renaissance period was definitely Michelangelo. As we know him, we've heard about him, or at least have heard about him. His most notable works are the Sistine Chapel painting, David, we're all familiar with, and Pieta, Pieta sculpture. Um, it's funny because he actually didn't go to school, but he loved to draw, and that's where it all came, and that's actually what we talk about in this class, is about kind of just having a drive for it, and that's what he had. 
So here are some of Michelangelo's work. Da the David sculpture is on the left. Um, the top middle one is the creation of David, which is part of the Sistine Chapel paintings. The top bottom painting is a picture of the Sistine Chapel ceiling, which contains many other paintings by Michelangelo. And the right picture, the right paint uh, sculpture, is the Pieta sculpture of Jesus on Mary's lap after crucifixion. So the Renaissance in Northern Europe is when artists were even more concerned than Italians with depicting life in the real world. And um, an example of this is Jan van Eyck, Eyck, was a leading painter in Flanders and was one of the first to use oil painting as a medium. This is very big. We talked about oil painting too um, in this class. And yeah, artists began developing um, a style that depicted this, this real life, this realism, which we'll get to in a second as well. So here are some of, uh, like I mentioned before, um, Jean Van Eyck's painter, the Arn Arnolfini portrait. Uh, Peter Bruegel, which we'll talk about in a second as well, is Hunters in the Snow, and he was very big on landscape and portraying this common life of people and their lives. And, and um, Albrecht Dürer is a printmaker, and this painting is called The Night, Death, and the Devil. So get a sense of what Northern artists created. Um, so as I was saying, Peter Bruegel, he was big in the Protestant Reformation, and this type, he created this vision and a type of art for the uh, Protestant Reformation, and it consisted of a broad sense of composition and spatial depth. Um, the focus on, of his paintings, like I mentioned, were the lives and surroundings of common people. And be, this Protestant Reformation began around 1521, and was the major factor that conditioned art production in Northern Europe. It was led by rebellious monk Martin Luther um, during the Northern Renaissance. Oh boy, that's a... So, as I was saying, uh, the Protestant Reformation during the Northern Renaissance, most art was made for private collection in the homes of wealthy patrons um, as opposed to palaces. So Baroque, this is huge, 1600 through the 1770s. Artists used techniques from the Renaissance to move art in the direction of drama, emotion, and splendor. This period had more varied styles than, than the Renaissance, yet much of the art shows a great energy and feeling and a dramatic use of light, scale, and um, composition, and a still continued use of dramatic light and dark called chiaroscuro. <laughs> So many of the characteristics of the Baroque style were spawned and promoted by the Counter-Reformation, which was the Roman Catholic Church response to the Protestant Reformation. Um, some artists, such as Diego Velasquez, were court painters, which at the time were very respected positions. Um, most of the art, like I mentioned, depicts both religious, secular, and non-religious subjects. So it was definitely more encompassed. Um, pieces of work. So Caravaggio uh, was known for down-to-earth realism, dramatic use of light and contrast, and depicting supernatural spiritual events. Now this is very different from what we were talking about before with the real life events, with, with such as Peter's, Bruegel's way of seeing it as comparing to the common people. So he uses these quality, not Peter, Caravaggio, uses these qualities to heighten the religious experience and to add emotion. And here's some of his work, the conversion of St. Paul. Um, the middle one is David with the head of Goliath. And the last one is the calling of St. Matthew. So more Baroque art, art and artists. Um, this Bernini's David is the sculpt, the first, whoops, the first sculpture, um, Peter Paul Rubens, this is called The Raising of the Cross, and Velasquez is, Diego Velasquez is Las Meninas, so they're all very, so Rococo is a style that was enthusiastically sensual, enthusiastically sensual, where art 
works actually moved out of palaces such as Versailles and into fashionable townhouses called hotels. Um, so the Palace of Versailles, most of the royal French court style is distinctly Rococo. Um, from the heavy and theatrical qualities of the Baroque came this light and playful decorative style. Um, and it was mainly in France. It was developed in France. So here are some of the styles. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, just, yeah, it's great. Beautiful to look at. So like I, you know, beautiful. Some of the characteristics are extravagant, frivolous. Curved shapes and billowing forms created sense of movement, light, and gesture. Um, more lighthearted than dramatic and provided romantic versions of life free from all hardships. So, Birth of Venus. We briefly talked about this before, but this is a work of art and there is we wanted to focus on it because there's a lot of reaction to it. It clearly stems from the Renaissance era and it focuses immediately your focus immediately is drawn to Venus due to her center position and nudity, which is a very big thing that kind of opened the eyes of a lot of people. It does allude to Eve from the Garden of Eve, yet this artwork makes one feel like there's a story beneath it. There's a, a, a hidden story and a deeper meaning regarding who the figures are and what they represent. So it kind of stems this curiosity curiosity and this mystery. Yeah, this mystery. Um, so, The Birth of Venus was actually by Sandro Botticelli, created in 1480, depicts the Roman goddess of love just after she was born, I assume we're all familiar with Venus, um, and the couple on the left symbolizes the wind who blew her to shore, so we'll get back up here, so it's the gods, um, very, very Greek, and the woman on the right who greets her represents spring. Um, again, more of a description. The Neo-Platonist uh, philosophy is a central preoccupation on the business-oriented, um, of the business-oriented, and the secular art patrons who commission most Renaissance art. Um, so this is very big. Obviously, it focuses on classical mythology and was based on the Neo-Platonist. So here's some interpretation, and it draws back to humanism, which again is the belief that the universe can be understood by human reason without the need for divine intervention. And it is also the belief that the human form is the pinnacle of the pinnacle of creation, and that man is able to create beauty rather than just hoping to find it somewhere. Hence the title, Birth of Venus. And I think it's absolutely beautiful and something to definitely be respected. And obviously it is. So evaluation, judging by its world-renowned status as a masterpiece and personal enjoyment of the art, The Birth of Venus is a successful piece of art. Um, the aesthetic theory that can be employed to support this claim is um, mimetic because the painting aims to represent realism and forms that occur in nature. And since it successfully, successfully does that with its figures and details, it is needed indeed a good piece of art. And that concludes our presentation. We appreciate you watching and enjoy the rest of the music in this last slide. Thank you again for watching and paying attention. <laughs>